With Indiana Jones and the Great Circle on PC, we are seeing machine games making a great PC game. There is no shader compilation stutter, there is no obtrusive traversal stutter, and it is one of the few AAA games to require hardware ray tracing. There is not a fallback to some poor quality raster lighting here, nor is there software ray tracing like we find in UE5. And yet, contrary to popular expectations, it runs great with its ray traced lighting on lower end hardware with the right settings. Machine games have also gone one giant leap further to embrace the future tech of full ray tracing, which renders all lighting effects via ray tracing. I would love to talk about it for this video, but that full path tracing is being added to the game on December 9th, which is after this video is looking to be published. So for today's video, I will be talking about optimization and how the game runs right now, which as I mentioned, is generally really well. So you can play the game now with it running well on low-end hardware, or you can play the game in the future with future hardware and have it look even better. That sounds like an ideal situation to me, but prior to release there were fears about how this game would run due to the released settings recommendation chart. To say the least, the fears elicited by this chart were without context. And I think context is key to understanding how and why a game runs the way it does. One great context clue to give you a sense about how Indiana Jones runs on PC is to compare it to the console version, like the Xbox Series X. The CPU and GPU of that console are rather low end nowadays, yet the game runs at 1800p there, typically at 60fps, according to my colleague John. How did machine games get a game to run so well and so high res there even with RTGI? Simply put, the Xbox version is running settings that are at times drastically lower than those available on PCs low. The game's key effect, which requires hardware ray tracing, is global illumination. That handles the game's indirect lighting and shadowing. It makes areas suitably bright from the sun bouncing around them even when in shadow, or it gives objects away from light proper occlusion and shadows of their own. The current gen consoles have mediocre ray tracing performance, and RTGI is notoriously expensive, so to get it running on console, machine games degraded its quality. On Series X, a large number of objects are missing from the global illumination pass. Critically, in the jungle opening, tons of vegetation is missing, leading to bounce light from the sun being found everywhere where it should not be. This makes objects look not situated into the environment, glowy, and a bit strange. On PC, on the other hand, it is more naturally lit, with occlusion and darkness occurring where it makes the most sense, and bounce lighting being there where it should be. I would say it looks a lot better on PC. Even the lowest setting for RTGI on PC, as we can see here, manages to look a lot better than what is found on Xbox. Even in indoor scenes where less objects are culled from the RTGI on Xbox, the PC's lowest setting still manages to look better there as objects and lighting are more accurate. Like how this tablet and the edge of the wall here are floating oddly on Xbox, while on PC even the low RTGI setting is more precise. It is important to know how a game looks and runs on console, as it shows how and why the game potentially runs the way it does on PC. And in this game's case, it is using lower than low settings. Now technically, I would ideally like it if such settings were also available on PC, as they would be great for ultra low end GPUs and handhelds, or for those who do not mind lighting quality just being worse. Generally, more meaningful settings are better, but still it's good to know how it's running on console there. The Xbox also uses other compromises to get it running well. For example, anisotropic filtering is closest to the PC's medium setting, but due to the usage of variable rate shading, which degrades texture quality, it can look almost worse than the lowest AF setting on PC, where textures turn a bit soupy close to the camera. Volumetrics as well on Xbox appear to be lower than the lowest setting, which gives them less detailed beams and they're more prone to flicker in motion. Shadows on Xbox are closest to the medium setting, which reduces the amount of geometry added to shadow maps. So entire objects lose shadows indoors, like the artifacts and the wooden cabinet right here. Basically, there are a number of shortcuts and quality degradations used to get the game running well on console at a high resolution. And on PC, we can learn from those degradations to quality to get a faster running experience on lower end hardware.
Now usually at this point in the video, I would use the console settings or derive my own settings to get optimized better performance for low to mid-range GPUs. But based upon what I've seen in this game after having played through it multiple hours on GPUs of various calibers, I can easily say that this game is very light from a rendering, shading, and even CPU perspective, and modern GPUs should be fine even with the game's RTGI maxed out. Typical optimized settings suggestions are just not needed here. You could turn down things like RTGI quality or reflection quality and only get minor performance wins, and I would say they are not worth it. Arguably, you should keep everything to the highest in this game as it is not super shading or compute bound usually on modern GPUs. Rather, you should only adjust those things that are memory bound, things that affect VRAM. And the most important setting for optimizing there is the streaming cache size option for textures. Context is once again very important, and going back to the recommended spec sheet, there's a good context clue here. Machine Games actually did a good job of calling out this game's VRAM limitations, though I think they could have done it even more explicitly. Take a look at the spec here for recommended settings at 1440p. The 3080 Ti and 7700 XT are actually very different GPUs in terms of shading power and ray tracing, but they are similar for their amounts of VRAM, 12 gigs, and indeed I would say this game is built around that amount of VRAM. So if you have 8 to 10 gigs of VRAM, you can run into issues with the aforementioned texture cache setting. Here is an RTX 3080 trying to run the game's ultra texture cache option at 1440p and as you can see the frame rate is abysmal. You can see this happen on a GPU when VRAM is being overfilled and this texture quality setting is typically set too high. Now this would probably require testing from you in the audience, but luckily for you in the audience, I have tested many permutations and come up with this handy optimized texture setting diagram. Basically, if you're on an 8GB GPU, you'll want to stick to the lower settings, even at 1080p. With 10 gigabytes on an RTX 3080, you'll want to use the high texture setting at 1440p or medium at 4K. For 12 gigabytes, you can technically run the game's supreme setting at 1440p, but you will have to drop down to Ultra at 4K. This diagram is very accurate in my testing and should lead to great performance with no major issues, barring three very specific caveats. For one, if you look at this chart, you can see how the 12GB GPU there says do not use the Supreme Texture setting at 1080p. And that's not because it runs out of VRAM, it should technically work fine, but at 1080p I found a bug with this setting where GPUs look like this when running it at 1080p. It's completely broken graphics, so avoid that supreme setting at 1080p as far as I can tell. The second caveat is for 8GB GPUs in general. I do not recommend higher than the medium setting for shadows at any resolution on 8GB GPUs. Now I would never recommend low as I think it looks awful, but the difference between medium and ultra is somewhat small usually. The resolution of the shadow maps is the same there more or less. Rather, the difference is, as I mentioned earlier, there's more objects added into shadow maps on the higher settings, above medium. This can cause potential very slow performance on 8GB GPUs on any resolution when it's above medium, so keep it at medium. The third caveat I have with an 8GB GPU is specific to 1440p. You have to run the hair setting at low on an 8GB GPU at 1440p, otherwise you will also overflow the VRAM in scenes like in the Vatican, where there's a lot of characters running around. In the end, if you keep to the settings I put forth in this diagram, including my caveats for 8GB GPUs, then you will have a very fast and fluid experience with every other setting essentially maxed out in Indiana Jones on PC. Take this gameplay here on that previously mentioned RTX 4060. Only 8 gigs of VRAM, yet here I am at 1440p using DLSS in balanced mode and I'm attaining a nice 60 FPS in gameplay very easily. This is with every other setting otherwise maxed out. The things that are lower are textures, shadows, and hair. The latter two are running at medium and low respectively. And I would say the game looks rather alright usually at these settings barring some texture issues. So what exactly is the downside to using that lower texture cache setting? This setting in id tech gives control over how often textures are streamed into the GPU. On lower settings, the cache is smaller, so things are streaming in more aggressively, closer to the camera, leading to lower quality potentially. On higher settings, the cache is much bigger, so textures do not stream in as often, and you won't see errors usually. 
In back-to-back -back comparisons of different settings across GPUs, the differences can be large or non-existent depending upon what you are looking at. So take this shot of the idle across three GPUs, left running on low, middle running on high, and the right running on supreme. There's actually no difference for these textures here, and that is what can happen some of the times. But sometimes, like we see in this cutscene just before looking at the idol, the low setting can show a lower quality texture that visibly changes as the cutscene is occurring, swapping in to fit in the cache. Notice how the high setting in the middle though looks exactly the same as the supreme setting here. The low setting can also just end up never loading a high res texture fast enough, as we see here in a previous cutscene, where this character's face and hands never get the high quality MIP to load in as the camera zooms in on his face. This does not happen on the high or supreme setting on the GPUs with more memory here to the right. The one area where high will typically fall below supreme is on distant textures from the camera. As we can see here, the textures closer to the camera on the far left on the RTX 4060 on low are lower quality than those in the middle and the right on the 3080 and 4070 Super. But if we look in the distance in this same shot, we can see that the 3080 on high has slightly lower res textures than the 4070 Super, which is using the Supreme Texture Streaming setting. Typically, if there is a difference in texture quality, it will be in the distance at the high setting versus Supreme. As we're showing here though, the low setting can have textures up close being rather low quality. And this isn't too good looking as sometimes you can just walk forward as I'm showing here and you will see a definite line in front of the camera along the ground where the MIP is changing in an obvious way as it is liberally streamed in. It's trying to fit such high quality textures into a small cache aggressively which leads to this issue. But at high and above I would say textures pretty much always look the same with not too much of anything to fret about. And that is really all I have to say about optimization here. The key to getting good performance in this game is making sure you keep within a VRAM budget. And that is about it. Those are the optimized settings. Now before I close out this video here, I want to talk about some specific issues, tweaks, and things I would like to see in future patches, as nothing is ever perfect. For one, I find the game's level of detail to be too low per default. It is no wonder this game runs so fast on the GPU. If you walk forward in any area, I think it's obvious to see the level of detail changing very close to the camera, leading to geometric pop-in. Just the first area in the jungle has many places where I found this rather obvious. I would like for the devs to introduce an LOD option to tweak this to be much higher for higher end GPUs. If you use the developer console, you can see what this looks like. Using this command here and jacking it up to five from the default one, you can show that there's a lot less pop-in on the right here than there is on the left. There's basically none at all. Setting the setting up so high to five does come at a GPU cost and memory cost, but I think it would be a great option for the devs to expose in the menu for future high-end GPUs. The second issue I have is with shadow quality. I find even the ultra setting on PC way too low res, and it also has paging behavior between the various cascades, which is very obvious on any shadow that is longer. If you walk backwards or forward along a long shadow, it'll reveal this ugly line where it switches from slightly medium res to ultra low res, and I think it looks bad. I would like a supreme setting if possible for shadow maps to alleviate this issue, though in all likelihood, the full ray tracing option will make shadow maps completely redundant. The third issue I have is with the game's dynamic resolution. It only currently works with TAA and not DLSS. DRS in id tech in the past, such as in Doom Eternal, worked perfectly fine with DLSS, and I would love for it to work with it here. My fourth issue with the game is that the game only has DLSS and TAA for upscaling. No FSR or XESS here, and I really think it should have them. My fifth issue is a slight annoyance with the game's checkpoint system. The game doesn't have traversal stutters, but depending upon where you are, a checkpoint save can trigger and that'll be accompanied by this little hat icon in the corner and a short frame time blip. I wouldn't think it's that bad usually, but in areas like the Vatican, there are so many little checkpoint markers all across that area that when you physically trigger them, they'll lead to a number of frame time spikes. Honestly, I wish the game had an option to turn off some of the smaller checkpoints as found throughout the larger maps as it would get rid of any checkpoint saving blips on the frame time graph. Lastly, the animation issue in cutscenes that John mentioned in his video also affect the PC version. You have the animations in cutscenes semi-periodically only updating at what looks like 30 FPS. 
so it makes a number of scenes look very unsmooth. And this happens in the exact same place every single time you run the cutscene. So something isn't right there. The other thing you have is that camera cuts can be accompanied by frame time spikes of up to 100 milliseconds. So the game pauses on the last frame between a camera cut, sometimes for multiple refreshes, generally making the cutscenes look a lot less smoother than they ought to look. It would be really great to have both of these issues fixed in future patching. But in the meantime, between now and then, that is really all for this optimized settings video, and I'll be covering the game's full ray tracing implementation, going over how it looks and runs in the near future, presumably at the end of the next week. Until then, like, subscribe, ring the bell, support on Patreon, follow on Blue Sky, and as always, this is Alex, bidding you farewell, and auf Wiedersehen! Uh.